Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. This has been an unusual year, and though this service is going to be different than we're normally used to having. We feel sadness that we are not able to gather as a congregation in this space, and yet we are so grateful that we can still, on this Christmas Eve, gather in the name of Christ to celebrate his birth and his coming into our lives and in the world. Tonight, we are so blessed that Sheila and Melinda and the Board of Education have helped to put together this service. And we're so grateful for the families represented here tonight that are willing to share their gifts and their talents and their abilities. We welcome you into this holy time of worship. If you're at home, we invite you to have candles to light for later on in the service when we sing Silent Night. Until then, we invite you to join in to the story, the story of the birth of Jesus. The story of Christmas is a story of God bringing comfort to his people. It is the story of God coming down into this world to pay for our sins and the sins of the world. God came into this world in a most unusual way. He came as a baby, one of us. And the story of his birth takes place in the most unexpected of places. And tonight we will visit these places as we witness once again the story of Christ's birth unfolding right before us. Please join me in prayer. O oh, loving God, we thank you for this special time when we can gather this evening to remember the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, as we hear once again the story of how Jesus' birth was foretold by the prophets, and as we again enter into the holy story of what it would have been like to be at that manger scene, we ask that your Spirit would guide us and lead us in this journey together. And we pray that wherever we are at watching this tonight, that we would know that Christ, our Savior, has been born to us, and for that, we give thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hundreds of years before Jesus' birth, God chose a barren woman named Hannah to give birth to a son who would become one of Israel's greatest prophets. But this was only a shadow of what was to come. Centuries later, God chose an unmarried woman named Mary to give birth to the Savior of the world. When Mary learned that she was expecting, 
she traveled to the hill country of Judah to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Together, they waited for the birth of the one who would bring salvation to those living in the darkness of sin. First Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly, or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who were full hire themselves out for food, but those who were hungry hunger no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. Upon them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked will be silenced in darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder against them from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored, and that the mother of my Lord should come from me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised to our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home.
Long before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah promised that the Savior of the world would be born of a virgin. For hundreds of years, the people of Israel waited and wondered who it might be. In time, the angel of the Lord appeared to an unmarried teenage virgin named Mary, who lived in the small town of Nazareth. The angel told her that she was the one God had chosen to give birth to the child who would save the world from sin. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Matthew 1, 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, which was a righteous man, and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph spoke, woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The town of Bethlehem was a small town of fewer than a thousand people whose only claim to fame was that Israel's great King David was born there. 
But once again, God chose the ordinary things of this world to carry out his plan of salvation. The prophet Micah promised that one day, a shepherd king even greater than David would come from Bethlehem and rule Israel. Around the time Jesus was born, the Roman government ordered a census for tax purposes. So young Mary and Joseph traveled to Joseph's hometown of Bethlehem. While they were in Bethlehem, Mary's labor began, and she gave birth to a baby boy. Micah 5, 2 through 5. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place under Quirinius, the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, uh, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. They were, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn.
When the people of Israel were falling away from God, God promised that one day a Savior would come to announce good news to those who had fallen away. And that's exactly what happened when Jesus was born. Angels appeared to a group of poor shepherds to announce the good news. The Savior of the world had been born. Isaiah chapter 52, 6 through 7. Therefore my people will know my name. Therefore in that day they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Luke 2, 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you. 
Jesus, the true king of the nations, had been born. Sometime after his birth, wise men came from far off to pay tribute to Jesus. These earthly kings followed a star, something that had been foretold hundreds of years earlier. When they arrived at Jesus' home, they bowed down and worshipped the one true king of the world. By doing so, these kings showed that they recognized true royalty. Numbers 24, 17 through 19. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the sons of Sheth. Edom will be conquered. Sire, his enemy, will be conquered, but Israel will grow strong. A ruler will come out of Jacob and destroy the survivors of the city. Matthew 2, 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. When Herod, then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the mother, the child, with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Beautiful song. 
Jesus was born in a small town in the Judean countryside in Israel. But his purpose was not limited by geographic location. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He came into the world so that the light of his gospel might shine in the darkness of a world lost in sin and darkness. Today, the work of Jesus continues to shine around the world through his disciples, and that includes us. As followers of Jesus, we carry the light of the gospel into our homes, our communities, our cities, and to the ends of the earth. Isaiah 60, 1 through 4. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came, and he said to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age.
Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. In the same way that Jesus came as a light into the world to bring light to the darkness, we are invited to be a representation of that light in the world wherever we are at, whoever we meet, and whatever we do to be God's light in the world. And as this difficult year comes to an end, this is an invitation that is filled with hope and expectation. For we know that even one little light shines in the darkness. And so may our little lights shine for the glory of our God, our Creator, who so generously gave us the gift of Jesus, born among us, full of grace and truth. In a little while, we will light our candles and sing Silent Night, and we invite you at home to light your candles as well and claim the promise that we are all God's children and we are all part of the light of Christ that Jesus invites us to shine fully and brightly. Amen. Now let us go from here proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness, which the darkness shall not overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you this Christmas and evermore. Amen. Oh, mm-hmm.